Welcome to Get Moving TV. I'm Dr. Chris Landon and I serve as your host. Here in Ventura County, again, we just have these incredible resources, people just hidden away. Uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, meet up with Steve Neal, who's our uh, first guest here. Uh, via Leonard Nimoy interviewing me and, and then years, a couple years later when uh, I was given the opportunity to, to uh, donate to his son's uh, uh, making a fanboy film and gosh for five dollars you could get an LLAP button live long and prosper and for two hundred and fifty dollars family photographs and for fifteen hundred dollars you could get your ears molded by the guy who uh, Oh my God, you've got enough Leonard Nimoy DNA left in the mold there, but ah, you had to go where he was, which was exotic Ventura, California. <laughs> so, Steve, welcome to Get Moving TV. This is your second appearance, I guess. Well, thank you, Chris. Yeah, yeah it, I, actually, I think it's my third, but third. we can't get rid of it. No, well, I just, I'm only a few minutes away from here. Well, the other is we've just completed a project, so right, we did. Uh, it, it's uh, been. Uh, uh, in all of our heads now that we have these people who are at the end of their career in Hollywood and there's it's not like they don't know what the heck they're doing mm -hmm. uh, but they're kind of put off to the off to the side and we have the opportunity to, to really put their skills back to work uh, and what was the first movie there and then we can talk a little bit the about the first that. film well, the first film that we made with that group with Paul Gentry oh with that group and, yeah, yeah that was called but something is there um, and that's on Vimeo, so we'll that's, run that. Yeah, that is we, absolutely on Vimeo. On it was on uh, YouTube for uh, quite a while, got almost a million views, uh, but there was some copyright infringement, according to their bots, right, right. which we could never solve because everything was PD, and, but, so we pulled it down. And uh, I got my own account on Vimeo, which I pay for, so I don't have those difficulties, and I put it there. So and it continues to be watched. And it's a predecessor to this, now the second episode, which is, mm -hmm. what, how did, what, what is the, the title of the second episode? And what, did you it's wake up the, from a dream or something? What, uh, what happened there? It's called The Dream Time. Well, of course, the first film was called But Something Is There. The reason it's called that is it's yeah, because there's really, when it comes to the paranormal, nobody knows exactly what they're dealing with. No, nobody has uh, all the goods on that. But we know that it's real, we know that it's measurable, and we know that these things happen to people, and we have lots of witnesses and lots of evidence, despite what the scientific community tries to say. But we don't, those of us who are serious about the subject matter, we don't claim to have all the answers, but something is there. And so that's how the title came to be. And so people have been writing to me and saying, when are you going to do another one and another, because you know, they really liked it. And particularly the people that liked it were the people who have experiences with things they can't explain, but are in the, that remain hidden. They don't even talk to their own spouses about it or their family. Very rarely do they, and very rarely do they go public. You see plenty of people go public and talk about the stuff, and they're very questionable at best. But these are the real people, and they write to me and they tell me how much the film made them feel better about themselves, that they didn't feel alone with this stuff. And uh, so I thought, well, maybe at the time, it's been three years, right? So do another one. So because I have lots of experiences with the paranormal, um, I tried to pick something that I could do that wouldn't cost an arm and a leg to do, like the first picture. Um, that didn't wasn't heavy heavily effects laden, and so what do I do? I shoot I shoot, shoot a film that the very beginning of is live action in a live action location, and all the rest of it is of course uh, staged with green screen, and I'm sitting there day in day out compositing backgrounds, but it, it's great. It, it didn't cost as much, and it's based on um, a very I have very powerful dreams. I mean dreams that. Uh, make complete sense, that uh, I could smell, taste, feel, be cold in, can touch things. Uh, I can look in a mirror and see myself. Uh, I just, it's another reality, for lack of a better description. In one of these particular cases, um, I came to sitting in this very strange location with very odd people walking by, and I heard somebody grumbling and sitting next to me, and I looked over, and there's Adolf Hitler. 
it, it was just something you don't forget. You know, dream or not, you don't forget a dream like that if it was a dream. Par parallel universes are inhabited by somebody. Well, there's a lot of, of, of data now to suggest scientifically that, the, that parallel universes, multi-universes are possible. Thank you, quantum physics, which was laughed at back in the 80s and now is taken very seriously. But I digress. I decided to make this film about that experience because it was remarkable that Hitler had remorse and that he uh, was trying to warn me about things that were going to happen to the earth if we didn't pursue a different path than we're doing currently, which is, uh, I think, self-evident to any intelligent person that we've put this environment in very, 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 very dangerous situation, dangerous to us. Mother Nature will recover fine. She'll just kick us off. And so, um, so the film's kind of about that. In a nutshell. So, uh, in terms of the people you brought in, you, you called on old friends, uh, but your friend list is a little different than mine. Yeah, well, because I worked in Hollywood all those years, mm. so. I so, uh, I know you borrowed some equipment from Paul Gentry. Has he done anything in the movies at all? I... Paul? Oh, God, he's worked on so many things, I can't even list them all. Uh, um, Total Recall, Fifth Element, I mean, that. Uh... I think so. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I just, you know, it, it's funny about me. I have so many friends that, well, like Fee Neal, for instance. You know, we've been mm -hmm. friends for years. We started in the business together. She's got four Academy Awards. I couldn't tell you all the pictures she's worked on because um, yeah, Beetlejuice and Johnny Depp movies and things. But, you know, I, I sort of slip on the titles because most of the films people work on, I'm really not interested in, so it doesn't really stay here. Now, if they worked on Planet of the Apes or 2001, I would never forget that, or Star Trek, as I did. So, but uh, well, who Paul? Are, who were some of the others? So we had Tammy Klein. We had Tammy Klein, and she's, uh, she does a lot of acting. She's also a visual effects um, whiz, works at uh, Asylum with Glenn Campbell, and then she also is a very good actress. Yes. And she's uh, very skilled in, in the film business, even as a director on B Pictures, of which they're making one right now called Planet Dune. So, um, got to take a break from Sharknado every now and again. Yeah, yeah. Well, they even got me to work on that for a while. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then we have Steve Altman, who I've known for years, uh, who played Mark this time, the original actor in the first film. Um, probably wouldn't have wanted to do it again, so, and I just thought it would be great to have Steve do the part. He's an excellent actor, he's an excellent performer, he's a very creative artist, and, and, and he's multi-talented and very good with music, and uh, so uh, I thought it would really be great to have Steve. And then we have Wa Rob Wolford, yeah. who played the grandfather, and the G-Man, and several other characters. He sort of did a, a Peter Sellers type thing in the first film. We had him in all different makeups, playing all these different characters. Uh, and in this one, he plays Hitler. And he did a great job. And again, he was putting a lot of makeup. Well, that you did prosthetics. I did prosthetics, did Hitler's yeah. nose, and yeah. uh, he was really transformed. Yeah, he was. And I remember when we first did the first test makeup uh, on him, you know, I've been doing this stuff for a long, long time, and I've done a lot of, you know, everything from old age to character makeups and lots of monsters, Spock ears. None of it ever disturbed me. But when I, when he was done and he went into character and wouldn't break character and kept staring at me, and I, I, I was, it made me uncomfortable. It's the no, first time I've ever made up, did something like that that made me uncomfortable, so. It was an interesting experience. I have a picture of him shaking my, his fist at me as Hitler, and oh, you, you, you could definitely uh, feel the power and the glory. He, he's a very fine actor, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to do a third one, and, and it's already in the works. And uh, I don't know if you remember Walter, who was on the set. He came yes. down from Bakersfield. Uh, I saw a short film that he did just on his own with his friends, and his performance was amazing. And I said, okay, we got to grab this guy. Because I love, you know, working with unknowns, mm -hmm. you know, mostly unknown actors, and they're just amazing. And it's like they don't even know they're really good and <laughs> until you see them. Go, that's amazing. So um, I'm considering having him in it and Rob back in, and of course uh, David Allen Graff too, who's worked in Hollywood for years, doing bit parts and character actor 
work, and he was in her film too, and, and this is the second time he's been in one of her films, and he was phenomenal, really good. His performance was well. I was saying to Steve just a while ago that sitting in the edit bay and watching the performances without any sound effects, without any, any score, it just carried. I mean, you, you mm -hmm. didn't need it particularly. And so by just adding a little bit of score, a little bit of ambience, a little bit of effects, it's really going to uh, enhance it, but it's really not needed. The performances were strong enough that you could get the emotion uh, from their performances. So I'm very pleased. Well, personally, of course, I uh, feel that it's a, it is an important message. You certainly throwing Hitler in there makes it immediately <laughs> uh, controversial. And where, but where Hitler goes and as the as his physiognomy changes, yes. uh, uh, it's fascinating. So uh, uh, I've entered it in our little film festivals because mm -hmm. it's a documentary film uh, under under 40 minutes. Uh, if we win a silver or gold at a couple of those festivals and Academy Awards, uh, <laughs> here we come. So. I just want people but, to see it. Exactly. And, and, and that, get something out of yeah. it. That, that's why we do art. We do art uh, first to please ourselves. You know, we don't think about anybody else or how commercial or successful this is going to be. Uh, it's film. It's not movie making. It's filmmaking. So it's, it's art on film. And then people enjoy it and they always, you always have an audience. Uh, that's so much the better. So it's, it's great to, to experience that with an audience and they have them enjoy it. Or sometimes they boo, yeah. you know, <laughs> and in some cases that can be a compliment depending on who your audience is. So. Well, Steve, thank you so much for, for breaking away from the studio oh, and, you're and, and very joining welcome. us. Anything to help face. Anything to help Vase. You hear that, Ventura? <laughs> uh, uh, Steve's studio is here. It uh, uh, can be open from 1 to 5, uh, Steve Neal Gallery. Uh, uh, so, Ventura, we'll be, we'll be right back, but, yeah, support Vase. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm still Dr. Chris Landon after that little break, and I'm so lucky to be here with Steve Altman. Uh, you, you just heard from Steve Neal uh, about the incredible quality of actor, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, Steve and, and how he got here, where he's going, hopefully give you some good career guidance of what not to know, of, of what to do in your life there. So, you're welcome. I, you're, you're, you're Thank you, sir. Very well. Thank you. So we're just starting to talk about, uh, you know, how you how you got to California and where you started in life, and and then we'll take that journey through your life there. Okay. So, where, where were you born? We'll just start there. It was a dark and stormy night, I know. Well, it was. It was. I don't know what it was. It was. Uh, I was in her womb. My yes. mom. I was Dayton, Ohio. I was totally, fully Midwest boy. And uh, when we were nine, I moved to Detroit. So I spent most of my growing up in Detroit. It must have been interesting. I, I'll tell you, I was. Uh, no gangs, no guns, no, no just a normal life in Detroit. No, no. it was. Uh, we lived sort of a mixed neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I never understood prejudice at all until I left home and then yeah. just everywhere. It was, it was just, a, kids were kids, you know? You didn't see color, you didn't see anything, and, and it was never brought to your attention. So it was just like, life, you know? But you get out in the world and you, yeah. it's, it's a lot, lot different. People need to stand on somebody else to feel taller. <laughs> it's, oh my God, I love that, that's great. So, okay, you're in Detroit and uh, you're uh, uh, graduating from high school. Uh, what, what, what happens after? Everybody's, you know, I mean, we just had our high school graduations. They're going, I don't know, go to Disneyland for a day. Now what do I do? So, Oh, uh, there's no Disneyland in Detroit. You go to the car factory. <laughs> but I was anxious to leave, so I, I hitchhiked. This is probably the last possible time you could hitchhike. Pre-Manson. Pre Before people killing you, yes. yes. And... Uh, it was actually post Manson, oh. not that much longer though. Anyway, uh, came out to LA, I knew somebody who lived there, and I was hanging out, and then I auditioned for the dating game. Nice. And I got on the dating game, and I won. So, you know, wow. back home in Detroit, it's like, Steve, oh, yeah. hit the big time. And uh, that was a trip. And then uh, everything's been downhill after that. Yeah, I would say. Of course. Yeah. No, so I went back to Michigan and I did some schooling and then I went to New York and studied with Stella Adler, 
who, um, at the time, I, I just thought she was this blonde teacher. And then years later, this buddy of mine who had done hair, he goes, remember, remember what Stella Adler's class was? Stella Adler, what are you talking about? The class we were in, I went, that blonde woman? That was, <laughs> that's how yeah. totally out of it I was. Well, uh, what, kind of, what kind of schooling, just in, in terms it, of? It was, it was like, it's not unlike. Drama school? Yes, it was an acting English. school. Okay. Because she, Stella Adler, Uta Hagen, yeah. Lee Strasberg, they were all doing the same kind of thing uh, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. So the same kind of thing is uh, a more, uh, you know, method, method acting? It's, method you know, method acting. is yeah. always, it's like, I remember thinking, oh, you're going to dig down for the memory of that? And you're just, well, that's, I, I'm going to start a school that uh, teaches you how to memorize your lines. It just seems yeah. that's part of, that's how yeah. you do it anyway. I mean, yeah. you just become this thing. So I, I ended up... Um, it's a dating game. Stella Adler, okay, we got a star here. Yes, dating game. Um, I uh, ended up signing with Motown Records in a long time ago. And uh, I had written a song with a buddy of mine, and I got to Jose Feliciano. The, here's the oh. weird, this is a weird thing. This is a really crazy thing, is I'm from Detroit. Uh, I write this song, it gets to Jose Feliciano. So I meet Jose, and I'm hanging out with these guys, and uh, it was surreal. And then they recorded the song, and it was, it's on an album, you can, you can Mm -hmm. You can find that. <laughs> well, see, I, I saw Jose Feliciano play, and he would run onto the stage. You go, he's blind. How is he doing that? But there's this black string, of course. He's right. following in, and he's and he's so funny. He's a really he's funny a, guy. Very he's a really funny, funny guy. guy. So that that happened, and the, and the the night that I recorded that demo, because this manager guy said, you you, you got we got to get a demo of that. We got to. So I booked this cool little studio that Billy Joel used to record in in, in the Valley. And of course, I'm walking up and down the halls, and I'm and there's a grand piano, and I'm going. B -b Billy Joel played this piano, and I'm, I'm playing the piano. There's some DNA left on there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Sure, there was. And uh, they, so it was just going to be a vocal and a piano, nothing fancy, just just to get the song out. So we're, it, as soon as we go, I go. Let me let me do it a couple times. So we do it a couple times, and I go. I'm ready to go. So okay, here we go. Take one. So I do the song. And they go, do it again. I go, do it again. I go, well, give me two more. So I did two more. So they go, do it again. I went, okay. Fifteen times. They made me do it 15 times. Now I'm thinking, I suck. So I, I walk into the booth and I go, how's it sound? And they all turn to me and they say, John Lennon was just killed in New York. And I'm like, come on, how does it sound? <laughs> they knew me. they weren't going to tell me because they knew when they yeah. got there. So that was this weird thing. But that's the song that got to Jose Feliciano that got to Barry Gordy to sign this contract with Motown, which is this crazy, weird thing. You know, Lennon, the recorded that Lennon was killed. It's like, that's kind of weird, dark, but it's also sort of yeah. weird. Yeah, <laughs> just weird. Pass the spirit to somebody. Yeah. And then Motown, I'm from Detroit. It's just the odds, it's like stars lining up. It just felt really, really good. Uh, there's, a, there's, there's a horrible ending to that story. I, I don't want to get into it. But um, the guy was, was a writer with, he um, sort of self-destructed. Oh, I was a good guy, but that happens. Um, but I went on to just keep writing, and I ended up just through mere, I was doing stand-up for a good long time. I was in Houston doing stand-up, and this was after the Challenger disaster. And this, the, this gal I met, Bonnie Dunbar, she's an astronaut, with, and Ron Sega, she's married to another astronaut. And we really, really, we really hit it off. And so the next year I'm there, and she goes, well, you know, Steve, I'm going up in three years if you really want to, because I said, oh, I've always wanted to put something put some stuff up in space, and she goes, well, um, I'm going up in, on the first one in two years, and so anything you have, I'm, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's going to happen. The next year, she goes, well, I'm up in next year. I, she goes, Steve, it's got to be up there six months before the shuttle goes off. Everything has got to be in the shuttle. It's going to be in the shuttle. So if you want to give me a cassette tape or something, I'm like, oh, my God, this is real. This is really going to happen. So I created this tape with some songs and some comedy stuff, and they would tell me what the mission's about, and I would have these, just like a fake crazy commercial would be like, it's, it's Crazy Bonnie's Midnight NASA sale. Solid rocket boosters, normally $4 million. This week, a half a million dollars. That's insane! So just stuff like that, and songs, and he, she took it up there, and she listened to it, they passed it around, and I ended up doing like three more like that, which was just, to this day, I, I'd forgotten about it, kind of, because you're not supposed to talk about it can't really tell people about it. I would do morning shows while I was doing comedy, and they'd ask me these questions, and I couldn't, wasn't allowed to talk about it. But since they shuttered the shuttle eight years ago, I'm allowed to talk about it. 
and it was uh, exclusive. Get that, moving TV. That's <laughs> so that was probably the, the high the highlight of my life. And I just found those pictures like not too long ago. I'm, why haven't he? Why aren't he up on the wall? So um, I would love to because uh, my you know Branson just went up yesterday and Bezos yeah. is going up next week and this whole new industry is starting um, with tourism. Yeah. And only the rich guys could do it. But when flat screen TVs came out, only the rich people could afford them. But after a while, they pay for themselves, they get the costs down, and that's going to happen. That'll happen in our lifetime. Well, they need miners to work on those asteroids that are filled with all those $1 trillion worth of yeah. metals and lithium and gold. And that's us. Well, well, I'm looking forward to our interview on the space station, which is, I think, yes. that's like next week or something, right? Uh, yes, yeah. I was, I was trying to think if I got my ticket back in, on the email there so I can get my QR code. Yeah, and, you save the miles, by the and, way. And, and that saves the miles. So, yeah, now we, in all this dating game, comedy, songwriting, uh, intergalactic uh, <laughs> stardom, uh, uh, we, we just had Steve Neal uh, on talking about the movie. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, Steve's a funny guy. Uh, you know, Steve. He just gets this in his head. He obsesses and, and just drags people into this maelstrom of activity, and then something pops out the other end, which is, which is nice. So how did you get dragged into the maelstrom? I've, I've known Steve since uh, 80, and, <clears throat> and V, his, his, uh, mm -hmm. his wife at the time. And I was helping him on. I was going through a, a girl just had just crushed me and broke my heart. <laughs> So That's I'm what working in this place yeah. and I'm making all the scoop and I'm crying and they're going, Steve, why are you crying? I'm going, oh, this, I'm allergic. I think I'm allergic to this stuff. And, and we've been fast friends ever since. We're born, we're both Pisces. We're like born within the same year. We're both named Steve, all this stuff, you know. So we just really, really hit it off. And I'm on and off throughout the years. I don't know if you remember Jilly. He was married to Jilly for right. a really long time. Renaissance Fair. And in the last couple of years, we've been connecting a lot. And he goes, I want you to be in this this new version of the film. Because I came to the first one, remember, at your house? Yes. Screening. I love your house. <laughs> just, it's just so much great artwork and the books. And um, I hope you didn't miss the one that I stole anyway. Um, so he asked me to do this film, and we just completed it. I haven't seen it yet. I don't like watching myself at all. Well, you look just like yourself. You'd but be surprised. People have told me that. Yeah. And um, he's, he's, he's the kind of guy, he's kind of director, a lot of directors will be like, okay, um, now this time, I want you to, you know, I want you to take the character, and I was like, you know, he's like, okay, you ready to go? <laughs> yes. So then you do the scene, yeah. and if you want something, can you look slightly this way when you do that line? That's about it. Because I know come green screen time, it's that shadow is going to screw me up. Yeah. That's right. Oh, my God, I forgot green screen. Yeah. And then you work with Rob, uh, playing off of him. How was that? Well, I'll tell you what. I, he, he, what a great guy, for one thing, Rob. Uh, Rob Wolf. He's fantastic. And we've been rehearsing like for a couple of weeks. Then I'm sitting there, and he's dressed as Hitler. And oh my God! I mean, I, I never worked with Hitler, <laughs> and we were just having so much fun uh, between takes. Yes. You know, we just have. I hope that's probably on a blooper reel somewhere. But Rob, it was fantastic. We had this great scene. Uh, it's really, really Rob's scene. You know, it's, he's doing all the talking, all the heavy lifting. And I'm like, you know. Um, we can switch chairs if you want. To. <laughs> That's my job. That's you? right. But it was a trip. I loved Rob. I loved everybody having uh, Mary, Steve's wife, and uh, the whole crew, everybody there. It was great. Tammy. Yes. It's part of it. She's fantastic. Yes. Um, that's all I can tell you about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, I'll let you know, Tammy has reached her own level, whatever. So just being in B movie after B movie after B movie after B movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And I used to uh, rebuild uh, jet engines uh, for the, oh, of course you did. And, uh, and she's, as a woman, she's, you know, on the spectrum there of being Asperger's and, uh, just what they have to go through to mask themselves so that they look and, and right. people don't realize uh, uh, what's going on. And she's capable of anything, as she uh, can, Steve was talking about. You, you find somebody that says, uh, yeah, I fix jet engines and I act on the side. It's like, do you have Asperger's? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. who else yeah. can go from one extreme to the other like yeah. that? 
it's it's all good. So yeah. where where do you see yourself going now? So you're just beginning your your career. You're going to head back to the dating game and uh, start yes. again, or no? I'm a uh, I, uh, I kind of dropped out of life for a good long time, took care of my mom, and then mm. she passed, and then I'm, a lot of weird things. I put a, I have a musical, I wrote a musical version of The Time Machine, and put that up of at the uh, Hollywood Fringe Festival, and that did really well, and now there's some talks, we'll see what, what's going to happen with, with regard to Broadway, it's, it's a, Broadway's crazy. Um, uh, and I just shot a film, uh, it's a found footage kind of film, and uh, Steve was the consultant on it. Because uh, Paul Gentry mm -hmm. and I were, he was working on this Just Imagine show, this Lennon show mm -hmm. that we did. And we'd seen Paranormal Activity. And I'm like, how come nobody's doing one of these found footage movies about, you know, UFO stuff? Because we know all these guys in town that do all these UFO effects. And Steve. Boy. Yeah. So wrote this thing. It's a found footage movie. Three kids are driving around in a uh, RV, like, like an MTV show. Hey, we're documentary makers, and you're going to watch what it's like to make a documentary. We're going, we're going to Burning Man this year. And so you see a lot of that stuff, and then they camp, and then weird shit happens. Yeah. And they got these, like, five cameras running. And this is, we got all these cameras running, so you get to see everything. And so while they're in the tent, we, as a viewer, can see all the other cameras going, and we see shit going on. I'm sorry I said that word. No. Uh, we see stuff going on that, um, that they don't know what's going on. So that's what I liked about the idea. All right. Well, Ventura, uh, <laughs> welcome to the ordinary looking people who are uh, uh, sitting there with uh, movies and dating game and intergalactic uh, song uh, uh, hits there. Intergalactic. Uh, so, I'm known on several planets. So uh, it, it's a long life. There's a long career. You don't know where that's going to be taking you. So get training. Come here. Come on down to base. Learn how to do this. But Ventura, it, it, it's really it's time for you to. Get moving.